Hey friends, welcome to Kids Celebration. You know the drill by now, so let's get started. Welcome to Kids Celebration. Even though in our nation stuff is all shut down, so you're watching this at home. Welcome to Kids Celebration. Even though in our nation stuff is all shut down, so you're watching this. Welcome to Kids Celebration. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Jonah. Jonah was the guy who got swallowed by a whale because he didn't go to Nineveh like God asked him to. So we're gonna talk about him today, but what's gonna be important is we're gonna to have to pay attention to our truth pillar throughout this lesson. And our truth pillar today is a growing relationship with God. Remember, our truth pillar for that is Jesus is my king and my friend and on him I can depend. So what we're going to do is like we did last week, we're going to do it in a couple different voices. So uh, we're going to say the truth pillar together. Let's first just say it together right now in a normal voice. Jesus is my king and my friend and on him I can depend. Now we're going to do a couple of weird voices. So first, why don't we try doing it where we hiccup in between every single word. Kind of like this. Jesus is my king and my friend on him I can depend. What about if we try to do it while doing jumping jacks? Jesus is my king and my friend. On him I can depend. And let's do for our last one, let's do where we're touching our toes. Jesus is my king and my friend. On him I can depend. Great job. So today we're going to be learning about a man named Jonah. Jonah knew that God was his friend, but he kind of forgot that God was also his king. And for God to teach him the lesson that he was not only Jonah's friend, he was also Jonah's king, Jonah had to spend three days in the belly of a fish. That's crazy. So I'm going to tell you the story, but in order to do that, we're going to need some props. And you're going to need to have some props at home. So if you have any Legos, or if you have anything that you can build something that looks sort of like a fish, even if you just have to draw a fish on a piece of paper, I want you to spend the next two or three minutes either getting Legos or drawing a fish or building a fish out of pipe cleaners or whatever you need to do. I want you to go and make a fish because we're going to need a fish during this lesson. So spend the next two minutes going and getting the materials and making a fish. See you in a bit. All right, hopefully you all have your fishes. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna spend a little bit of time in worship. I'll pray for us before we go into it. 
and then uh, we'll have our lesson together. So let me pray for our time before we go into worship. God, thank you so much um, for today. God, we ask that you would teach us through Jonah's story that you are our king and our friend. God, we ask that you would teach us that you love us deeply, you want to be our friend, and also that you are the one who is guiding us, that you are also our king. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's hit the worship! Ready? Yeah, Dad. Oh, RJ, don't get yourself in any trouble, okay? Capiche? Zoom tight. Ublek. I'm gonna put it on my pinkus chair right before she sits down. That's not a loving thing to do. Why would you do that? I want to make an impression at the school. Now's my chance to start over. I want everyone to see me as a cool risk taker. Living life on the edge. Don't you know? That's ridiculous. Why don't you give me that? What? No. For your good and the good of those around you, hand over the Ublek. No way! <laughs> been sent to the principal before. Sorry I got us in trouble, Ruth. Ruth? I've never been sent to the principal before. You brought your Bible? Yeah, I've been bringing it to school with me each day. Do you remember where we left off? Yeah, at King David. Last time you told me that Israel had King David in charge and that his reign would never end. How did that make any sense? Didn't David die a long time ago? Yes, but God meant that David's kids and their kids would always be the kings of Israel. And from David's line would eventually come the king of all God's people. Yeah, so God kind of messed up on that promise, huh? That didn't happen, right? Oh no, God kept his promise. We'll get to that part soon enough. But before that final king came, there were many other kings who did not do a good job. The story goes on in Kings 1 and 2. When David passed on, why Sodom did rule? He built out God a temple, they say he wrote much truth. Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon too. But Solomon was spinning and he married many wives. His heart got hooked on sin when their idols filled his eyes. Next came Rahab from the side, to Jeroboam to Abbevi. Then the north and south divided, all the kings got out of line. King after king, let idols be just fine. Then all the prophets said, no, no, Israel, you're gonna go. Israel, from the promised land to exile, if you follow other gods. All the prophets said, no, no, Israel, you're gonna go, Israel, from the promised land to exile, if you follow other gods. Jeremiah said, Jerusalem will go down, Jose claimed idolatries like cheating on your spouse, Zephaniah screamed a day of judgment was in store, Micah yelled our leaders all got wealthy off the poor. Then Nehemiah started preaching, don't hurt those who need a hand. Nahum started teaching, God would judge the wicked land. Habakkuk started crying, oh my God, where have you gone? While Isaiah prophesied that a good king would finally come. Despite our sin, God's promises are done. And all 
the prophet said no, no, Israel. You're gonna go, Israel, from the promised land to exile if you follow other gods. All the prophet said no, no, Israel. You're gonna go, Israel, from the promised land to exile if you follow other gods. John lived around then, he was prideful, he was bent. God said, go preach in Nineveh and tell them to repent. For Nineveh to fall was just what Jonah wished. When he tried to flee from God, he ran straight into a fish. But when he finally did what God had asked, Nineveh repented in sackcloth and ash. Meanwhile, Israel was filled with idol stink. If only for a moment they had stopped to think about what the prophet said. No, no, Israel. You're gonna go, Israel, from the promised land to exile if you follow other gods. All the prophets said, No, no, Israel. You're gonna go, Israel, from the promised land to exile if you follow other gods. All the prophets said, No, no, Israel. You're gonna go, Israel, from the promised land to exile if you follow other gods. All the said, No, no, Israel. You're gonna go, Israel, from the promised land. All right, welcome back. Now, are you guys ready to hear the story about a man who spent three days in the belly of a fish? If you're ready, I want you to say, oh yeah, oh yeah. God and Jonah were good friends. Jonah spent time talking with God and God took care of Jonah. And so God decided that Jonah was gonna be the person he was going to use for a very important task. Okay, 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 time out. Right, yeah, before we go any further, I've got to tell you about these other people. These people who are from a place called Nineveh. Uh-oh, I've heard about Nineveh. 
They were called the Ninevites. Can you say Ninevites? Ninevites. The Ninevites were really awful people. They were really, really cruel and really, really mean. Can I see your best mean face? Mean. I am mean. Whoa. Those are some mean faces. That's what the Ninevite people looked like. They were not kind, and they did not follow God. All right, back to Jonah. God told Jonah that he actually cared about the Ninevites. He cared about those people who were so bad and so wicked, and he actually wanted to redeem them. And so he picked Jonah for the job of redeeming the Ninevites. God chose Jonah as the one that he was going to send to the Ninevites. And when God told Jonah about that plan, Jonah's jaw dropped to the floor. Can you drop your jaw to the floor, kind of like this? Do it in three, two, one. That's what Jonah felt. He was like, what? What? Wait, what? What? Jonah thought that the Ninevites deserved to be destroyed because of how awful and how mean they were. But even though God was Jonah's friend, he had forgotten that God was the king of everything, even the Ninevites. So what did Jonah decide to do? Jonah decided to run away from God. Jonah decided that he was going to try and run away from what God told him to do. So he hopped onto a boat, set sail, and set out into the open sea. But when he got out into the sea, he noticed that his boat was starting to rock. While I'm telling this next part, can you kind of rock back and forth? I am rocking. I will also rock back and forth. The sailors were really afraid. First, they tried throwing stuff overboard that was extra weight. Get this thing out of here. Then they tried praying to their gods. Please help us. Please help us. None of it worked. They finally decided to ask, who was responsible for this crazy storm? Jonah spoke up and he said that God was very angry with him because he was trying to run away from his mission to go to Nineveh. Say what? I said, say what? Jonah said that the only way to stop the rocking and the storm and all the fear that the sailors were feeling would be to throw him overboard. Even though the sailors weren't sure, they decided to listen to Jonah and so they threw him overboard. And what did they notice? Whoa, we stopped rocking. Yeah, we completely stopped rocking. That's crazy. The waters were instantly calm. Our God is so powerful. He was able to silence the sea. Okay, pause. But what happened to Jonah? He just got thrown overboard. Yeah, God didn't forget about Jonah. God actually sent a really big fish to go and swallow Jonah so that he wouldn't drown and wouldn't die. That's crazy. We don't know exactly what kind of fish it is, but maybe it looked sort of like one of the ones that you guys made. Or maybe it sort of looked like one of these. Maybe it looked sort of like a dolphin. Or perhaps it looked like this shark. Or maybe it even looked like this exquisitely designed piece of craftsmanship. So Jonah spent three whole days inside the fish. Whoa. Three whole days? Whoa. That's right. God was trying to get Jonah to understand that even though he knew that God was Jonah's friend, he was also king and we need to obey the things that he says. So let's say our truth pillar together one more time. Here it is. Jesus is my king and my friend and on him I can depend. We can depend on God to help us out with all the things that are going on in our lives but we also need to remember that it's important for us to obey. So guess what Jonah did? Jonah told God while he was in the belly of the fish that he would obey. And so what happened? The fish got up, swam up to the shore, and spit Jonah out of his mouth. Then Jonah went from there and marched all the way to Nineveh. Time to go to Nineveh. Here I go. Jonah got to Nineveh, and here's what he said. People of Nineveh, stop being awful and mean, or else God is going to destroy your whole city. Jonah walked through the town just making that announcement, telling the Ninevites that if they didn't turn from their ways, 
God was going to destroy them. But you know what's really, really cool? They actually listened. They actually turned towards God. Yeah, it's crazy. When the king heard about that, when he heard what was going to happen to them if they didn't turn towards God, he and the whole city turned to God and they repented and they asked for God's forgiveness. And God forgave them. And he didn't destroy their city. So let's say our truth pillar one more time. Remember, this is about a growing relationship with Jesus. It's Jesus is my king and my friend. And on him, I can depend. God is our friend and he takes care of us and he wants to know us and he wants to know about what's going on in our lives. But he's also our king. And so it's really important that we obey him too because he is powerful and he is king over everything. So before we go to worship, let's pray one more time and then we'll sing another song and then we'll be done for today. Let me pray for us. God, thank you for what you teach us through Jonah. Thank you for what you teach us about obedience, for how important it is to follow you, for how much you care about us following you, and how you want to use the ways that we follow you to save many people. You want people to know about you. You want people to love you. And as we follow you, it's both good for our lives and it's good for the lives of those around us. We love you, Jesus. We pray all this in your name. Amen. All right, let's hit one more worship song. Straight. 